Hi, I'm Lisa Steele from Fresh Eggs Daily, and I'm excited to bring you today's episode of First Time Flux in conjunction with Blue Seal Feeds, and I'm here with Violet. We are outside. It's finally gorgeous out. I know it's a little bit dark, but I didn't want to sit in the full sun because the sun is really, really strong. It's so nice to finally see the, str the sun after a long winter. Um, so today, I'm going to talk to you about something that is really important and I'm thinking that a lot of you who got baby chicks earlier in the spring are thinking about getting them outside, getting them integrated into your flock, um, out into their new coop, into their new run now that it's staying warmer. So that's what we're going to talk about today is integrating new chicks into your flock. Violet here is um, nine. So she has seen a lot of chicks come. She's seen some go. Uh, we've rehomed some roosters and we've given some chickens to friends. And um, unfortunately, we've lost a few flock members, not many. Um, but she definitely has seen her share of new baby chicks come into the flock. And even as sweet as Violet is, she does not like it. Ooh, that's how much she does not like it. <laughs> um, chickens don't like... Whew. Chickens don't like new additions to the flock. Uh, the pecking order is super important to chickens, so a new member just represents a threat to the pecking order. It's um, a threat to their place on the roosting bar. It's, it's someone to eat the treats and the feed. So chickens don't like new additions. Um, if this is your first flock, if you just got your first baby chicks in February or early March um, and they're heading outside at about six or eight weeks old, um, it's going to be fairly easy for you. That transition isn't difficult. You just need to make sure that it's not getting super cold at night, um, that the temperature outside is about the same as in their brooder box and they're gonna be fine out in their coop. Um, they don't need heat. I don't like heat out in the coop. It's easier to keep an eye on a heat lamp when it's in your house, in your laundry room or your mudroom or whatever. So by the time the chicks have gotten some of their feathers, most of their feathers, if you, especially if you have more than three or four, they're gonna keep each other warm. You can get them outside. Um, you can even probably get them outside earlier than eight weeks or so on nice warm days. In the sun, out of the wind, they'll enjoy the um, fresh air, the grass, you know, getting some exercise. So I always like to do that because those of you raising chicks, by six weeks, you're ready to get them out of the house, <laughs> at least part time. So for your first flocks, about eight weeks, depending on your weather, you can get them outside into their coop and run um, full time. Now, hey, shh, Miranda. So for those of you who got baby chicks last spring, and you got them out in their coop and you've had them for a year and you decided to get some new chicks this spring, this is where it starts to get difficult. I'd say after keeping your chickens safe from predators, the next most difficult thing is integrating new flock members into an existing flock. As I mentioned, chickens don't like new additions. Um, honestly, the easiest way to do it is to hatch baby chicks under a mother hen. That's kind of the exception. You know, when they hatch right in the coop, um, after they hatch, I do like to move the mom and babies from the nest into a dog crate or small cage on the floor of the coop. Um, I leave the door shut for the first week or so, just so she can concentrate on being a mom, keep them safe. And then after the first week, I will leave the door open and the mother hen can lead the chicks out, you know, to, to um, get to know the other flock members. But since they were hatched right in the coop, I've never had problems. The other chickens don't bother the baby chicks. They know they're part of the flock and the broody hen also lays down the law. So that's really the easiest way to integrate new flock members. But if you're doing it in the house because you bought them at the feed store or you hatched them in an incubator, you've got to somehow make these two groups a cohesive unit. So what you don't want to do is just put them in there. Um, chickens will kill each other. So that's not a good idea. Another thing that you don't want to do, well, two things that I read a lot online, um, both terrible advice. I hope you can hear me. Hey, shh. Um, the one thing you don't wanna do, I've read, is to take dryer sheets and rub all the babies with dryer sheets and then rub all your old chickens with dryer sheets, put them together, that way they can't smell who's new and who's not. Miranda, hey, come here. So, um, <laughs> because Miranda wants to be part of this. Um, so that doesn't work because chickens don't have a great sense of smell. They don't identify each other and recognize each other by a sense of smell. So the dryer sheet thing is not gonna work and you don't wanna be rubbing chemicals all over your chickens anyway, so don't do that. The other thing that I read a lot that's more alarming is people say to put the new chickens, and we're talking 
if you've already got chickens, you probably don't want to start adding your new chickens till they're at least 10 or 12 weeks old. Um, I know it's hard to have chickens in the house for 10 or 12 weeks, but maybe if you can get them outside into a little starter coop or something separate for the last, you know, two weeks or so. So around 10 or 12 weeks is when you're going to start this. Um, but, you know, they're, they're almost full size, not full size, not really filled out yet. So people say to put them into the coop at night because then when they wake up in the morning, they'll think that they're one big flock and they'll be integrated. That is not going to work. It's terrible advice. Um, unless you're going to get down there right when the sun rises, you could have a huge bloodbath on your hands because the chickens will wake up. They're going to know who wasn't there last night. They're not that dumb. And they're going to start attacking each other and they're going to be all locked up in a coop. So it's really, really a recipe for disaster. Chickens recognize each other and they can recognize other chickens. Um, it's thought that chickens can recognize up to a hundred different flock members. <laughs> they recognize each other by the shape of their body and their head. So you're not gonna fool the chickens. So because you're not gonna fool the chickens, you have to kind of be straightforward with it. So what I like to do is bring my eight, 10, 12 week old chickens outside on nice days and let them free range a little bit right in front of the run. So the older chickens, see them they see them through the fencing they get to watch them if you can stay outside with them that's great if not set up a separate run a cage some kind of fencing a pen um, if you have a little starter coop i never ever ever recommend getting rid of that it has so many uses like this for integrating new chickens it's great for a broody hen and her chicks if you have a sick chicken i mean there's just so many uses for those little starter coops so keep that so you're going to set up your new batch next to the run during the day so everybody can see each other. You might see a little bit of posturing through the fence, you know, puffing up. Even the hens are going to get super aggressive. Let them work it out for a week or two. Then I like to try free ranging everybody because it's neutral territory. Um, get everybody out in the yard. There's lots of things for them to do. There's lots of things for them to be occupied with instead of bothering each other. If you absolutely can't free range, then when you put the new ones in for the first time, give everybody some dried leaves or mealworms or snacks, treats, something to keep their minds off of the little ones. Then watch and see how it goes. Um, you should stick around, make sure that nobody's going to be, you know, really, really mean or ganging up on anybody. Um, sometimes it goes really smoothly. I've had some batches. Hey, shh, burn. Um, I've had some batches that integrate really well, and I've had some batches that they're just like, Arr. so you have to let a little bit of um, squabbling happen. They have to redefine uh, their pecking order. That is going to happen, ha have to happen eventually, no matter what. So you do want to make sure that your new chicks are about the same size so they have a fighting chance. Um, but you are going to have to let them squabble. As long as it's not drawing blood, as long as they're not picking on one, ganging up on one, you kind of have to let it all just work itself out. Um, but what helps? outside is to have some perches, benches, swings, things the chickens can hide under. You want to give them places that they can get out of the way if they really are being picked on. And you do want to stick around and watch and you want to check in often and watch and you just want to make sure that nothing goes wrong. Um, if somebody does draw blood, the other chickens are going to be attracted to the sound of it. And of course, everybody's laying their eggs right now. Um, anyway, so put them together, see how it works. If it's not, you know, terribly bad, you're done. Boom. If it, if there's real fighting, um, separate them for another week behind the fencing, let them try it again. Um, what you can do is separate your run into two pieces, just using chicken wire or fencing or whatever. Let everybody be together during the day, all day between fencing, then bring the little ones in at night. Um, so that's, that's really the way you do it. You got to be patient. You got to take your time. If you do have one bully, and it's not always the older chickens, sometimes it's the new chickens, um, take that bully out, put them in a dog crate away from everybody with food and water for a couple days, then put them back in. That knocks them down a few pegs. Um, but you have to kind of get inside the head of the chicken and, you know, figure, they're seeing a threat. So you have to make that as easy as possible for them. And, you know, hard as it seems, and it, I do kind of, you know, <laughs> I don't look forward to doing it whenever I add new chickens. They do get integrated, and my chickens now, they don't just hang out with their flock members. You know, they do eventually make friends with chickens from other batches, so don't give up. So the other important thing to talk about, and again, if this is your first set of chicks, um, they're going outside, they're all by themselves, you know, they'll 
eat the chick feed while they're in the house. You put them outside about eight or 10 weeks, they're onto the grower feed. And then you're gonna put them onto the layer feed around 18 weeks. Guys, oh my goodness. Anybody who says only roosters make noise, they're crazy. Chickens are loud. Um, anyway, so when, you, when you're integrating the two flocks, other than the whole getting along thing, the other problem you have is feed. Um, so if you have any chickens that are under, say, 18 or 20 weeks old, you need to put everybody on grower feed. Layer feed uh, is not good for non-laying chickens. It can cause kidney problems later in life. So you want to put everybody on grower feed. There really is no way to keep your layers eating the layer feed and your younger chickens eating the grower feed. So put everybody on grower feed. It's not going to hurt the layers, but they are going to need more calcium. So you want to give them oyster shell or eggshell, free choice. They will eat more of it than they eat when they have the layer feed. You will definitely notice that they eat more of it. They will get the extra calcium they need that way. Your younger chickens won't be getting too much calcium. And then once your youngest are about 18 weeks, put everybody back on layer. So if you're adding a couple different batches of chickens throughout the season, just keep everybody on the grower, keep adding the chickens. Once your, your youngest are about 18 weeks, put everybody back on layer. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, my girls eat the home fresh extra egg layer now available in these small packs um, make sure that you head to your local blue seal or um, feed store that sells blue seal or kent feeds to pick up feeds for your chickens good gravy um, and look for the new small packs uh, for all stages for smaller flocks new flocks and i'm going to sign off because these girls are crazy. If you have questions, ask them below. I will be answering questions. I'll check in throughout the day. <laughs> My goodness gracious.